While I was working on a program, I came across the need to have a dynamic two-dimensional array in C Sharp. And I couldn't find any documentation anywhere on how to do that. Uh, I looked at a lot of white papers and did a lot of Google searches, but I finally figured out a way using the dictionary and the list classes and the team up. And both the dictionary and the class, or both the dictionary and the list, have angle brackets after them where you can specify a type that changes the type of type they work on. Like you could have list angle bracket int angle bracket and it would be a dynamically allocatable list of ints. Or you could have string and it would be a dynamically expandable list of strings. And dictionary it's the same way except it has two parameters. A T key parameter and a T value parameter. So it's normally meant to be a key value pair where you have one key and one value and you can add to it uh, endlessly. It's dynamically expandable just like list. And supposedly it's very optimized for uh, lookups. So it's a great thing if you want to have like uh, some sort of flashcard program with uh, element name and, and atomic weight or something like that. Well, this is the program that I wrote in order to test the concept. And it's basically just two list boxes and a button. And in the first list box, we put the first dimension of the dynamic two-dimensional array, which I call topic. And in the second li list box, we put the second dimension of the two-dimensional array, which I call topic members. And probably the best way to see how this works is to just run it. So if I bring it up and I press Get Topic, I have all the topics. And really, normally, if I had something like this in a real program, I would have just filled this in with uh, the form load. So these would just automatically be filled in on this level when you loaded the program. But this is largely in order to uh, show you how it works. And if you click one of the topics, you see all the members of the topics in the second list box. Like I have, what, two, four, six, eight in this one. And in this one, I only have four. And in this one, I have quite a bit more. And this one, I only have three. So you see it's totally dynamic. You can uh, endlessly add topics, and you can endlessly add different members to, to the topic and it's totally jagged. It doesn't have to be the same number or anything like that. And the trick I use to do this is this line right here. In a way, this line is the only line of any significance in the whole program. <laughs> it's basically a dictionary and then an angle bracket and a string. So the first dimension, the T key, is a string. And then the second dimension, which is really sort of the trick, is a list. It has a list angle bracket string angle bracket as a T value dimension. And it, I define this as my topics and I set it to new dictionary. And then you have to specify the same types in the new dictionary. And then use uh, uh, parent parent because every new is really a call to a constructor when you instantiate the class. And once you've done that, really the problem's solved. And the form load, I do the two phases in, in adding to the two-dimensional array. The first phase is I take the uh, dictionary object and I do a dot add and add the first dimension, which in this case is writers. And then I do a new list uh, angle bracket string parent parent. And this basically adds the first dimension and creates a blank list you can add to the second dimension. And then you specify the writer's topic by saying uh, my topics square bracket quotation mark writers quotation mark square bracket and then you have a dot and an add so you're now adding to the second dimension with the first dimension being writers and I add the first writer which is Ernest Hemingway 
then I do the same thing again, add the second writer, John D. McDonald, and so on, down to all the writers I want to add. And of course, later in the program, I could start adding other ones. You're not restricted to just doing it at the beginning. You can dynamically do it at any point in the program. And I do the same phase process for, two-phase process for actors, where I do a, my topics add, and then the actor's first dimension, and a new list, angle bracket, string, angle bracket, to create a blank list associated with actors. And then I add all the actors I want to add to the actor's primary dimension, and so on for movies and then scientists. So this is, once the form finishes loading, this structure is fully populated. And then if we go back to the form and look at the Get Topics button, uh, basically all I do is a for each loop. And I use a uh, indefinite variable, var. Instead of that, I could use a key value pair and the angle bracket t key t var value. In other words, I could have written it like this with a for each key value pair uh, angle bracket string comma list angle bracket string angle bracket second angle bracket topic in my topics and it would work the same way but why do all that typing when you can just use the weakly defined var variable and it'll take on the characteristics of whatever the variable type is defined as. So I say for each var topic in my topics and then the topic now has two uh, elements in it dot key and dot value and we're just interested in keys at the time we click this button. So we go through the list box and do an items add of the topic dot key and we get the four elements that are in the what amounts to the primary dimension of the uh, two-dimensional array. It's really the key in terms of the dictionary but the way we're using it is the first dimension of the two-dimensional array. And then if we look at the event handler for this list box, I double click on it and get the default event handler. It's selected index changed. And for this we get the uh, item of the selected uh, index, the item that's been clicked on using the list box uh, selected item to string and put that in a local variable called topics. And then I clear the list box use uh, items.clear and I do a for each that's a string uh, range variable that looks at all the my topics referenced by this uh, key. In other words, if this had been writer, this would be my topics writer. And if this had been movies, this would be my topics quotation mark movies quotation mark. And so it goes through the four each and gets each of the members in the second dimension list. And it does a list box items add of each of those members. So it works as I showed previously. If I do a compile and run again, we do the get topics and it gets the four primary dimensions. I select writers and it gets the second dimension with that second for each loop and it works great. It does exactly what I wanted it to. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.